Bonjour. Ooh, looking good. Yeah, I like you better without the tumor. <laughs> Five billion people don't have access to safe and affordable surgery. Tumors that are benign when we are in high income country is only good news if there's someone to help you, that you can afford the treatment, that it's safe and it's available. If not, it only means you will die slowly, not as quickly as if it's cancer, but you will die. Bonjour. Uh, Salam alaikum. <laughs> okay. This is 2018. There is no reason why people should be dying of benign disease in our planet. People come in with things that have made them on the edge of society for sometimes their whole life, knowing that you're accepted and loved by one another, and to, to have that in, in the heart is a part, a big part of healing. Ask me again in a week. Uh, Gary Parker sure is a surgeon aboard the world's largest hospital ship, the Africa Mercy. It is spending nine months docked in the port of Douala, Cameroon. 400 volunteers from all over the world work as nurses, cooks, and crew. Their mission, to offer medical care that the developed world takes for granted, whilst also training up new doctors. Over 3,000 patients will be treated. In a country where on average the life expectancy doesn't go beyond 58 and where the poorest have no access to surgical procedures, the Africa Mercy is their last hope. In the town of Douala, people of all ages rush to the artisan's market on the edge of town. Like Paul Yamba, around 60 people have gathered here in the hope of getting a free checkup from a volunteer from the Africa Mercy. The volunteers are a mix of Cameroonians and foreign professionals, trained to identify operable conditions afflicting the eyes. At the age of 60, Paul's eyesight is deteriorating. After a free examination, Paul may be lucky enough to receive cataract surgery. Voilà ton passport. Pour partir au clinique. Hein? Je souffre, moi je ne vois pas. Le serment. Et le Seigneur vous a amené pour me faire voir. Je suis très content, moi. Je suis très content. With no health insurance, many lack the finances to pay for such an operation. But places on the ship are limited, and the criteria for admittance are strict. This man is suffering from an eye infection. But his hopes will soon be dashed. Yeah, Qui ont des problèmes dans les deux yeux. Mais lorsque quelqu'un a un œil qui est bien, on ne peut pas le prendre. D'accord. Maintenant, vous pouvez aller dans un hôpital local pour demander qu'on enlève ceci, mais à vos frais. Vous avez compris. Lui, il a déjà un œil qui voit. Si on vient opérer cet œil-là, on prive quelqu'un qui avait deux yeux gâtés et dont on pouvait lui donner. Aboard the Africa Mercy lives an American couple who have dedicated their lives to giving back the gift of sight to the poor. Kim and Glenn Strauss work together every day. In this room, they prep their patients before their operation. Glenn is the only ophthalmologist aboard, 
He specializes in cataract operations. Let me get out of her way. Let me do the leading causes of blindness in Africa, which is on the rise along with an aging population. You can see white people are very advanced cataract. He is assisted by his wife, Kim. My job is to get the patients ready for my husband. Uh, the cataract patients, they come, and a lot of them have never had any kind of surgery whatsoever, and so they're pretty nervous. And so we try to make it very calm for them and easy. Glenn will operate on 1,600 patients whilst in Cameroon. The results are often spectacular, as evidenced by Monique who was suffering from a congenital double cataract. <laughs> she was operated on that morning and is already able to make out shapes in her surroundings. <laughs> That's already good. It's a good sign. And she's already cheating. She can already see around the corner of her patch a little bit, so I think she'll have some very excellent vision tomorrow. This is a life change, and this will be a lifetime of change. For the past 12 years, hey, bonsoir. Merci. Please come in. the couple have chosen to live in this 15-meter squared cabin aboard the ship. Hi, this is our home. This is our cabin. And uh, it's very different from where we normally live. We live in a very large home and there is no room in our house that is this small. So we have brought a little bit of our home with us. And so like uh, flowers and things in our, to remind us of home. And then we move promptly into the living area and the office, <laughs> which is right here. And one more step, you're in the kitchen. Renouncing a life of luxury in a big Texan manor and beautiful grounds, they keep this poster as a reminder. Glenn made good money as a clinical surgeon, and they lived near their children and grandchildren. But these devout Protestants felt compelled to live by their faith, as their Bible instructed them. I knew that this is something that God wanted us to do. Even though I don't like to travel, I get motion sickness, on every, everything, even on this boat. Uh, I knew still that it was what, where we were supposed to be. What we have is, is a chance to see in a very practical way how someone's life can change fairly quickly. And it's especially noticeable with patients who are blind. And so those who go from, from having very limited sight or no sight at all to suddenly being able to to see the world around them, to see their grandchildren, to see their wife that they haven't seen for years. Yeah. Um, that, that's, a, that's a change that you can, you can feel. At the end of his working day, Hello. the surgeon becomes a pastor and leads a gospel reading group. Okay. Father, thank you that we have a chance to uh, uh, to meet together, to meet with you. Thank you so much that you, uh, you, love, you love us with a great love. Mercy Ships is an evangelical organization. And whilst there is no religious requirement to work aboard, the majority of the volunteers are proud believers. They rely on their parish to fund their lodging fees aboard the ship, as their other expenses already amount to some three to 500 euros per month. Kim and I, uh, we have uh, friends uh, that have supported us over the years, mostly um, some who are from the church that we've attended, some who are just friends that go to other churches. When you pay to be here, it's not just your time that you're giving and your skills and your training that you've accumulated over your lifespan, but you're actually sacrificing something of a monetary you know, value each month. And I think you have a bigger buy-in to the mission and it becomes more a piece of you. Some volunteers spend anywhere between several weeks to several years working here. The boat's interior has been designed like a village. All of your daily needs are met. Everything has been designed to make life as pleasant as possible 
whilst aboard. The children of volunteer staff can attend schools aboard the ship which cater for their educational needs up until leaving age. Their teachers also are volunteers. Mercy ships are funded by charity, requiring at least 15 million euros a year to operate. To attract investment, the organization brings its patients to the fore. Since her arrival on the Africa Mercy, this young girl delights in taking part in photo shoots. Here she poses with a young American volunteer. Afflicted by a facial tumor, Kaltumi has already undergone a number of operations. There you go. No, no, fais pas ça. Regarde, She came all the way from up north. She only had about a month left to live, and so the government of Cameroon actually decided to fly her down. And she arrived here just in time and had the surgery. Then she went back up uh, to recover and then came back again on a bus um, and had some more surgery to touch up the scarring and everything. Um, and so I think it's also a cool story because it highlights how the people of Cameroon, the government of Cameroon, has been working together with the ship. With the photo shoot over, this volunteer will write a poignant article about the little girl's story. It'll be published in a newsletter sent out to the donors, as well as on social media. The photos are designed to provoke a reaction. Having those visual effects, it really helps connect people to these patients and connects people to yeah, the work that's going on here. So no matter where you are in the world, you can read these stories and hear about these people. Um, if someone reads a story like this patient, Kaltumi, and it really has a heart for the Max Fax program and for, um, for people who have this condition, they can um, request that they want um, their funds to go towards this program. An online catalog allows donors to choose where their money goes. Donations range from $25 for an ophthalmic checkup to a $5,000 renovation project for a local hospital. To finance its onboard equipment, Mercy Ships was able to rope in a number of wealthy partners, whose names feature on a wall in the cafeteria. There are parties of the ship sponsored. For example, there are cabins. The piscine has been sponsored par notre petit bureau suisse. Euh, on a l'hôpital, c'est une fondation qui a payé l'entière. C'est une dame qui a payé l'hôpital, qui, qui a fait cadeau du bateau, une dame écossaise. Pierre Christ acts as a sort of diplomat for the Africa Mercy. Once a banker in Geneva, he now maintains personal relationships with African heads of state. Today, the crew are preparing to receive the Swiss ambassador to Cameroon as well as a number of business leaders. Along with the ship's manager, Pierre Christ is looking to show his guests where Mercy ships spend their money. As Switzerland is one of the project's biggest contributors. She's about eight days after her surgery now, so she had a, a big tumour there, but that's much, much better now. It takes a while for the swelling to go properly down, but she's, uh, she's well on the way to recovery now. The crew waste no time in pushing for an emotional impact to ensure that the ambassador puts in a good word about the project. Elle veut t'entendre la main. Oh, la petite. Beaucoup d'amour, d'énergie, de dédication. Pierre Christ must maintain full transparency, as some countries remain wary of the boat's intentions as it hops along from coast to coast. Un bateau grand qui vient, qui dit voilà nous on sait vous savez rien et c'est normal on n'est pas connu. 
quand on est arrivé la première fois en Madagascar en 2015, la première chose qu'on a lue dans les journaux et puis la position, on a dit voilà, ce bateau vient prendre l'or pour le ramener en Afrique du Sud. Et petit à petit, quand les premiers patients sont rentrés dans leur village, ils ont dit ah mais ils sont pas mal ces mers séchées. Ils ont vu les patients des, complètement défigurés qui tout d'un coup avaient un visage qui était refait. Ici c'était la même chose. Le président de la session des médecins s'est dit « mais on n'a pas besoin d'eux, nous on est tout à fait compétents ». Et petit à petit, ils se sont rendus compte que la formation était nécessaire. Training local doctors is Mercy Ship's other key directive. Cameroon has seen a number of its health professionals emigrate. They are short of surgeons, particularly some capable of passing on their skills. An ophthalmologist from Douala, Christian Tuna, reports to the Africa Mercy every day for free training. This young doctor was never taught how to operate on eyes. Plusieurs de mes collègues vont se former en chirurgie à l'étranger, notamment en Asie. Beaucoup de collègues ophtalmologues vont en Inde pour faire des, des, des trainings de chirurgie de cataracte comme ce que je fais ici avec Mercy Chirurgie. Non seulement c'est coûteux, c'est très sélectif. Il y a des délais parfois de plus de deux ans d'attente pour pouvoir être pris dans un, pris dans un programme d'entraînement de, de, de chirurgie. For four months, Glenn Strauss will tutor Christiane until she completes her first operation unassisted. Oui, to begin the training, the surgeon has an unexpected technique. Okay. So the tomato is, is a good model for the eye because the skin is very thin. So the, the idea is you will just go through the skin and then make incisions and stay, stay at the same depth. So you see three dots. One, two, three. So your objective for this is to follow the dots. Okay? You see how difficult that is. It's not easy. Yes, it's not easy. So as you as you move across a curve, but you I have should... to adjust for the curve to stay yes. at the same depth. I should follow the yeah. curve. Yeah. Glenn Strauss is thorough. As well as his own work, his role also requires him to pass on his skills, hoping that one day this country will no longer be dependent on humanitarian aid. In Africa, the number of ophthalmologists is still very low. Less surgeons, more cataracts. That means that uh, over the next 10 years, the problem is expected to get much worse. This is our challenge, is to address the problem by uh, producing capacity in the countries. Ah, see, a little harder. That's the same problem you have with the eye. So why did that happen? It's because uh, this, this angle has to change. So you start here, you end here. That's right, rotate and tilt. Ooh, excellent, c'est bon. You're working in a very small space, but, you're, but there's actually a fair amount of movement of your hand to get the angles. Most people don't think that training costs something, but it actually costs a lot, time, uh, resources, so someone who's training uses more resources because they don't use it as efficiently. So they need more of the materials to do the training than someone who's very experienced, doesn't require as much materials to do it. So there's a high cost, okay? Okay. We appreciate you doing Soon, this. Soon, Christiane will put her new skills into practice and will carry out the entire operation unassisted. In the east of Douala, Paul awaits his call aboard the Africa Mercy, having received his checkup a few days prior. He will be one of Christiane's first cataract surgeries, an operation that could seriously improve the living standard of this 60-year-old merchant. Manger. Déjà, la catara au Cameroun, c'est 120 000 francs s'il faut opérer les deux yeux. Un œil, c'est 60 000 francs. Avec toutes le, 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 les difficultés, les 60 000 francs, je n'ai pas 60 000 pour le moment. C'est pour cette raison que je vais vraiment, je cours voir mes chichips pour qu'ils m'aident.
Paul and his wife live in their daughter's house, who has since emigrated to Belgium. She sends them money when she can. She helped to pay for her father's first operation, but he wasn't satisfied with the result. He says that the damaged crystalline in his eye was not properly replaced. He hopes that he will get a second chance. <laughs> The following day, the Cameroonian government arranged for a bus to take 15 patients to the boat. It's a big day for Paul. Uh, you're going to do this first one? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, well. Christiane gets ready to put her new skills to the test. Uh -oh. Dr. Strauss has put together a technique specifically tailored to carrying out this operation in developing countries. So the type of surgery that I do here doesn't require any high technology uh, other than an operating microscope. Because it's low cost, they can actually do the same sort of surgery uh, in the country where we're training uh, the surgeons. Paul will remain conscious throughout the duration of the operation. Only his eye will be anesthetized. You need a lot more flexibility in your wrist, I think. It'll really help you. Okay, now slice. The trick is to be able to make the correct incision on this tiny surface. Okay, now slice. The smallest error can cause serious problems. Tip up. You're pushing the tip into the eye, lift the tip up. It needs to be a little further into the cornea, uh, across here. Nice. All that's left is to place the artificial crystalline beneath the cornea, restoring Paul's vision. There you go. Okay. Christiane has completed the operation, but moving forwards, she will have to work on her speed. Parce qu'il y a pas mal de choses qu'on maîtrise pas forcément, qu'on doit contrôler. Le patient qui bouge, éviter des complications, éviter des incidents pendant l'intervention, faire les bons gestes. Mais finalement, ça s'est bien passé. Will training new surgeons help to eradicate blindness from Cameroon? To answer that question. Glenn Strauss has invited on board the country's best professors and practitioners. Together, they will try to think of ways to improve patients' access to surgical treatment. Their first obstacle is the cost of the procedure. Is it a long way out of reach or just a little way out of reach? Minimum salary is $50. $50 a month, $60. That's $60. Okay. Dr. Strauss's operation costs only 50 euros to carry out. But here, that is the equivalent of a month's basic salary. Even if you dropped the cost a, a little bit for SICS, you still couldn't get people to come. Is that accurate? So we need a financial model that, that would support cataract surgery for those who are most in need, is what I hear you saying. The other obstacle is access for patients living in remote areas. School, uh, school age, eye problems. In the eastern province, in the eastern region, there is almost no ophthalmologist there. We can stay there one week, two weeks, but the Ministry of Health uh, has to organize that. We have we have willing people. They just said, "There, where do we're there? Send us the patients. We're we're here." So you know they're ready, but they need some organization from the government side. That's not their job to do that, and they're they're quite right. It's not their job to do that. Aware of the uphill struggle ahead of them, the government has started to provide more resources for public services. The Douala General Hospital 
is one of the best equipped in Cameroon. Despite the 70s style decoration, this resuscitation unit is equipped with the latest in mechanical ventilation technology. Each week, a team from the Africa Mercy come to train doctors and nurses and perfect their skills in dealing with patients. Esther Minka is a doctor and Otto Rhino laryngological surgeon. When on board the Mercy ship, she trained in cutting-edge maxillary facial surgery. Whilst fully trained, okay. she won't always be able to put it to use. Parce que tous certains patients qui viennent se mercer chez pour la gratuité, c'est avec une couverture santé. Je vous assure que il y a longtemps qu'ils seraient opérés. Parce que je vous ai dit qu'il y a des cas qu'on pourrait éventuellement opérer. Moi, je suis allée se mercer chez, par exemple, pour opérer des goîtres, des, des patients qu'on opère ici. A few kilometers down the road is Douala's other hospital. It now has a post-op consultation surgery, thanks to Mercy Ships. In the days following an operation, Glenn Strauss and his team check up on their patients and inspect the results of their work. So we just wanted to, to uh, this patient that uh, Dr. Christian did yesterday, it'd be hard to tell the difference between the surgery that I did and the surgery that she did. It looks really good, nice and clear, and she has some excellent vision already on the first day. The results of Paul's operation have not been immediately successful. His eye caused him great pain during the night. Elevation in his eye pressure, it's not too uncommon to see that. Papa, Uwe, 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 Yeah. Okay. Oui. Okay. Oui. 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 Understood. Yeah. So he can see fingers, which is a normal sort of uh, uh, expectation when you have this kind of swelling in the elevation and pressure. So. Je suis en train de voir un peu le brouillard. Oui. Mais le docteur m'a dit qu'à la longue ça va s'améliorer. Juste moi, j'ai la foi, j'ai la confiance qu'il y aura un changement. Oui. This improvement will come with time, as Cameroon has promised health insurance for all its citizens. Perhaps one day all Cameroonians will be able to receive treatment in their own country from their own doctors. <laughs>